if you include seventy one that's that one day has twenty thousand thirty thousand arrested people of good will I see you have R.I. Rhode Island the greatest mansions it was called the Gold Coast yeah. the Robert Barons of the golden age of policing Americans they all live there I used to drive there with my bus oh. motor coach oh. people love to see uh, those mansions the richest people's houses and I this is actually uh, not my uh, Rhode Island, this oh, is my okay. name and oh, initials. Sorry, sorry. And you know, apropos of Rhode Island, I was reading the American notes of Henry James upon his second, his return visit to America. And he said that when he went to visit a friend or two in Rhode Island, Henry oh. James himself was appalled. He was, he found the uh, nouveau riche presence and their their um, the opulence that was on display so gauche and so uh, vulgar it was vulgar. too much for even Henry James and uh, of course now I think a lot of those mansions are just for tourists um, well they're collecting money from tourist fees yeah, yeah. but uh, if you want to read a good critique not from the left but from the American Sons and Daughters of Wealth read Henry James' American Notes. Even he himself. What? Even he uh, criticized that. Appalling. He was appalled by the vulgarity of <laughs> the, uh, the Robert Baron era's living standards. So those bastards robbed the people. Yes. And. Um, they were the one percenters and invested in those um, you know like palaces yeah but um, and people go there to see that and they don't even realize that's based on blood and tears and sweats of the poor people they don't realize they're so close and they, you say they're oblivious to the thousandfold woes of the Robert Barron period, which extends to the present moment. That's um, still going just, on. Imagine our mayor. People seek consolation from their the woes of capitalism in this things at hand like sodas, and they're going to have to jump through hoops for the consolation of having a soda in New York while the same mayor was in front of Nathan's hot dogs urging everyone to have a hot dog full of nitrates and yet he's focused on the, the people have you know they see consolation from a beverage and they say that when he, he's a lover of popcorn he pours on salt The problem with the mayor is he would like to have a legacy on, for public health, and he does so in an absurd way because he, he knows he's leaving no legacy of the commonweal. He's leaving no legacy for the uh, safety net, for the basic living standards. He's leaving, he's leaving these eviscerated. But he, he wants, years from now, someone to say, but he was good for public health. He's not been good for public health. Without a home, without money for clothing, there is no public health. This mayor is a shameful man. Yes, he is. But remember, um, the political class is always there to protect the um, uh, economic class, 1%. But he's not to the manor born. Speaking of manor, we started out talking about Rhode Island manors. This man wasn't, he was born in modest circumstances. Right. And he has no solidarity with those from whence he came. And we, in turn, will have no re remembrance so of this uh, wicked. So he's a rich Noah, Noah Rich, huh? Yes.
this wicked element of the nouveau riche. Yeah. We shall have no remembrance of that man. But of course, his little, his uh, si these uh, proteges, Miss, the lady who's, who was running for mayor, she started out as an advocate for public housing, and now she's in bed with real estate. We shall not be voting for her, that is for sure. Yeah. I shall be voting for Mr. Mike Check when I go into the polling. Mike Check, huh? Mike Check. Yes. And on that note, I must go to the costume store. Okay. Au revoir. Au revoir. I check. And custom room. Good, how are you? What's going on? You got your body there. You got number one body.